For a closer look at the political space in Malaysia as GE15 approaches, we're joined by James Chin, Professor of Asian Studies at the University of Tasmania. And James, the previous election, GE14, was fought mainly on corruption, namely the 1MDB scandal that involved then Prime Minister Najib Razak. What are the main issues this time around? Uh, good morning. So I suspect the issues will be quite similar. Corruption has always been one of the key issues in every Malaysian general elections. And this time, I think the opposition will point out to the fact that if Barisan National wins the election, uh, there is a possibility that Zahid Hamidi, who's currently being charged with corruption, he may end up as being the prime minister. But more importantly, they will try to link Najib Razak to this case. As many of your viewers know, Najib Razak is currently in prison. But the argument is that if Barisan National Amno wins the election, people like Zahid and uh, Najib Razak, uh, who has been convicted of corruption, somehow they will get a free pass. So I think corruption will play a major issue here. On the governing side, I think what Amno and Barisan National will do is that they will promote the idea that if you elect us, uh, we will promote political stability. So they will try to tell the people that you know prior to 2018, uh, basically, Barisan National has ruled Malaysia for uh, more than half a century and you had political stability, you had good growth and Malaysia was progressing quite well. Uh, the reason why they can use that argument is very simple. If you look at what happened in 2018 after regime change, for the last four years, you had three different governments with three different prime ministers. So political instability, corruption, and the future of Malaysia, especially as they're coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this will be the key campaign issues. Let's focus on the parties, James. Uh, observers say this election is going to be key for UMNO. Uh, it's the first one since the party's defeat. Also coming on the heels of Chief Zahid Hamidi's recent acquittal on corruption charges. Are we going to see the political comeback of this party? Right. Um, just a slight correction. This is not the first time that UMNO has been in an election. Uh, there were two state elections in Malacca and Johor where UMNO basically led the Barisan National Supermajority. So they've actually gone through uh, elections before. So that's the reason why they're very gung-ho. They feel very confident that they can do well in this uh, general election. Now, assuming that the trends for Johor and Malacca uh, will come through to GE15, then it is quite clear that UMNO will sweep through all the Malay majority seats in the peninsula of Malaysia. So the way to do the calculation is very simple. Uh, there's about... 80 to 90 uh, Malay majority seats in the peninsula, and most of them will be in the rural areas. So if you remember, in GE 14, 2018, the rural Malays were basically divided into three big blocks. Amno passed the Islamic party in Basatu, then led by Mahathir Mohammed. Uh, it is my prediction, unless something very big happens, Amno will do a clean sweep of the rural areas again. And the second party that will perform well in the rural area will, of course, be past the Islamic party. Basatu will be completely finished in the rural Malay heartland. And what should we make of the fact that not all states are dissolving their state assemblies? Both Pasa and Pakistan Harapan say they won't dissolve theirs, while Barisan Nacional will dissolve theirs. I don't make much of that. Uh, that, in fact, the answer is very simple. The reason is because they're afraid of losing. So if you lose the federal election, you don't want a state election. You don't want a state election because if you lose the federal election, this means that you are still in power at the state level. So I won't put too much into that. Malaysia has had three prime ministers since the May 2018 elections. Uh, what outcome would offer the best hope for some stability for the country? I think for generally for most Malaysians, I think what they're hoping is that you won't have this constant change of government because I think people realize that for a country like Malaysia coming out of a pandemic, you need a measure of political stability in order to recover fully. Uh, Malaysia being a major trading country around the world was really, really badly affected by uh, the COVID uh, pandemic. Even I myself was surprised, you know, that a lot of the people in the middle class uh, not only lost their income completely, but a lot of them actually lost their savings. So I've been saying that, you know, maybe one third of the middle class pre-pandemic actually went into the lower class because of the pandemic situation. So people want stability because they think that, you know, with stability, you get economic growth, things will become normal. I will get a job, maybe I will get a pay rise and I will have better economic opportunities. So I think that will be on the minds of most voters in Malaysia in this coming GE. And James, now that parliament has been dissolved for the election 
and the election has to happen within the next 60 days. But when do you think it will take place? We know we'll find out next Thursday. So it is my prediction that the elections will take place in November, probably in the first half of November. Look, basically, they can't wait anymore. Uh, the key thing to understand is that uh, although the election commission in Malaysia is supposedly an independent uh, organization, uh, we do know that they can be influenced by the government. So I suspect they've already been told uh, what the preferred dates are uh, from the governing side and they're going to hold the meeting on the 20th, but that will just be a formality. So I suspect it will be in November and it will be in the first half of November. All right. Thank you very much. And I'm sure we'll be speaking to you again as the election unfolds. That was James Chin, professor of Asian studies at the University of Tasmania.